uh, or maybe Pope John the 26, I forget which one it is, you know, but, but it's just kind of ironic, all these anniversaries, and, 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 and why, why, not, why don't we just go ahead and invite Rome right in? Do you not realize what Ezra was dealing with was we had married among the heathen, the nations, and it was an abomination in the sight of God. To mingle the holy seed. Why? Because the seed was to come through Israel. Israel was to provide that faith seed. The woman's seed. It would have to be a woman somewhere in our lineage that would believe the word of God that could produce Mashiach. How can we say... Uh, I, 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 know, I know that... It is believed among our people that Mashiach will be a man. We do believe that. The question is, though, is Mashiach deity or not? We're not going to get into that issue right now. What we are going to address is what we're doing and what we're doing wrong. We are back in our homeland according to the promise of God, where he said once again that both the house of Judah and the house of Israel will dwell again in safety, and they will be a city as if there were no walls paraphrased of course we are there Ezra was back in Israel building the temple amongst all kind of violence all around him we're doing the same thing all kinds of problems around us but the biggest problem we have is the fact that we married in amongst the daughters of the other land it was an abomination let me finish this, though, for you, so you'll understand in a moment why this is so serious. Since the days of our fathers, we have been exceedingly guilty to this day. And for our iniquities, we, are, we our kings and our priests, have been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, to plundering, and to utter shame, as it, as it is this day. And that is true to, even to this day. The Holocaust, the pogroms, the Inquisition. How much more do our people have to suffer? Before, it's because of our own iniquities have driven us to this. But he did promise. Remember in Ezekiel chapter 36, he did not promise to return us because we were such a godly people. He promised to return us for his own namesake. And now for a little moment, Grace has been shown by the Lord our God, Hashem, to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a secure anchorage in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage Lighten our eyes to reveal something to us. This is, we're not home just to say that we're somebody better than the rest of the world. We're home that our eyes could be made open to be able to see. Do you not see what God has done for us here? He brings us home to lighten our eyes, to open our eyes, to get us to see. Baruch Hashem. He is so worthy to be praised. I mean, his worthiness is, is beyond anything that we could say in ourselves. Laha ir enenu. For a light to our eyes. They needed a light then. We need one now because we return to the land just the same way they have. They return to the land and we find out that the priest, the Levites, 
and the rulers had married in to the women of the other lands. And, and, and my rabbi and bre my rabbinical brethren, you may be sitting now saying, yes, that's right. We're, we're seeing our people. They're, they're, they're marrying amongst the Gentiles, and, and, and this is wrong. He's not just talking about that. This was a sign. This was foreshadowing what you're doing because it's beyond just the natural side of a woman. Israel has always been typed in the sight of God as a woman, as a bride to Mashiach. A bride of Hashem. Give us a little reviving in our bondage. For we were slaves, yet our God did not forsake us in our slavery, but gave us grace in the sight of the kings of Paras. To give us a reviving to set up the house of our God and to repair its ruins, and to give us a wall. Does that not tell you that this passage of Ezra, he's not speaking of a time of 2,500 years ago. God was having Ezra to speak of today to give us a wall. And we have a wall in where Judah. In fact, that's all we have right now is a wall. It is prophetic. The Demonia Mount. To give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God and to repair its ruins and to give us a wall in Judah and in Yerushalayim. It was prophetic. We call it the Wailing Wall. Now you might say, well, this wall wasn't there back then. But he's speaking of our day now. And now our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments, which thou hast commanded by the servants, the prophets, saying, the land into which you go to possess it, is an unclean land, though the uncleanliness of the peoples of the lands with their abominations, for they have filled it from one end to the other with their uncleanliness. Now therefore do not give your daughters to their sons, nor take their daughters to your sons, nor seek their peace or their welfare forever. You're trying to make peace with the other nations. And God has commanded you not to do it. You'll do it anyway. You're fixing to find out, though, what's going to be the answer to this. I know that we believe that God will send Eliyahu, Elijah, Hanavi, the prophet. He'll send Moshiach to deliver us. And unfortunately, we're going to have to say the same things that the Pharisees said 2,000 years ago, when Yeshua was walking the shores of Galilee, at least his disciples, and some of those, you have to remember now, Paul, who was one of his disciples, was indeed a Pharisee. He is a direct descendant of the Orthodox Jews today. He is your own people. And he also wanted to be delivered from the Romans. And here we are inviting them right back in again. The same sin that was committed by our forefathers in the days of Ezra are being committed again today. We are having a revival. We're reviving around Israel and the building of the third temple. And there's bravery to try to stand up against our enemies. But 
there's fear among our people as well. Rebecca prophesied of our day. You don't think Rebecca prophesied of our day? When God says to her, she goes to God and says, why am I, why is this happening to me? Why am I thus? The two children will wrestle in my womb. And God said, there are two nations in your womb. And if, when they come forth, they will be separated. And you go along and you let John Kerry and Barack Hussein Obama, the president of the United States, set up a nine-month negotiations to bring what? Peace? To bring a two states to divide Israel contrary to God's command. And what did he say you're doing this for? Nor take their daughters to your sons, nor seek their peace or their welfare forever. My king, Benjamin Netanyahu, Benjamin Netanyahu, your own name, Beshem Shacha Netan Yahu. Your own name is meaning is a gift of Hashem, a gift of our God. Why are you making such concessions? Now, I know, my brother, it troubles you. And it should trouble even Shimon Perez. But Shimon, you've done it for money. Don't even take their welfare. There is a space of time for you to repent as well. And leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. That you, let me back up, that you may be strong, we're in verse 12 still, and eat the good of the land and leave it for an inheritance to your children forever. And after all that which has come upon us for our evil deeds and for great guilt, seeing that thou, our God, has punished us less than our iniquities deserve and has given us such deliverance as this, should we again break thy commandments and make marriages with the peoples of these abominations? Wouldest thou not be angry with us till thou wouldest consume us so that there should be no remnant nor any to escape? O Lord God of Israel, thou art righteous, for we are left a remnant that is escaped as it is this day. Behold, we are before thee in our guiltiness, but we cannot stand before thee because of this. When our enemies try to overtake us, many of our people will die because of our iniquity. We must repent and we must put away, we must break this covenant that will soon be signed. At the end of this nine month negotiation, there will be a two state in Israel. It will break the very laws of God because of the marriages, the abominations that God will not accept, the filthiness that we will allow at the hand of our politicians and the religious leaders of Israel that have gone and set and dined with such filthiness as they have done with the Pope and the Vatican and his dignitaries. Now, something you need to know. I'm going to read to you from the Christian 